celebrating uh, innovation. I'm gonna uh, be talking about innovation, but I wanted, I wanted to focus more on social innovation. So um, the only time I got to realize that I can do something and pursue things my own way was when I decided to go out of my comfort zone. So it was, I, I was in the phase of discovering myself, of uh, really finding what I wanted to do. Uh, I was uh, employed in a high-paying industry when I decided to quit my job and join an environmentalist group and become an NGO worker. So I used to work for Greenpeace Philippines as a direct dialogue campaigner uh, when I saw a very interesting, first time I saw a very interesting innovation. So we volunteered in a province in Lao Cai, Vietnam, that's North Vietnam. How to get there, it takes about eight hours by train from Hanoi, and then another uh, three hours on land, and then you had to traverse Mount Fansipan, which is the highest mountain in the China, to set up a camp, which is going to be our dwelling for the next three weeks. So when we met the villagers, this is the, the innovation that I was talking about. It's, a, uh, it's made from rudimentary materials, but this piece of innovation here in the picture actually feeds the entire community. So this piece of machinery here creates the rice noodles catering for to, to about 50 to 80 households in a certain community. And so this renewed my motivation. So I went back to the Philippines with a renewed motivation of uh, doing something uh, like what I saw uh, when I was a volunteer in Laukai province. And little did I know that the Philippines has even more of this inspiring rudimentary inno innovations like what you see in the picture. So uh, upon my journey of um, trying to figure out how to do uh, uh, a very simple innovation that would have this uh, wide and huge social impact, I try to uh, jot down some of the things that I noticed among the innovations that I saw during my journey. So and these are the three things that I, I, I noticed along all the innovations that I have encountered. And it should, if, if you wanted to create an innovation that would have uh, a, a huge social impact, it should re revolve around these three things. So it should uh, have a very simple design, uh, the materials should be accessible, and above all, it should cater to basic human need. So I went back to my university and uh, started ex experimenting on materials, and it was hard. The journey was hard and it full of hurdles, and I was at the brink of uh, even giving up on pursuing it. But then uh, the thing that, again, renewed my motivation and inspired me to keep on pushing forward was when I decided to volunteer, living with a, uh, a tribe up, up north. So this is Kalinga. It's a Butbut -but tribe, so situated about eight hours by land from here. I was able to live there. As you can see, the village is literally on top of the mountain. They don't have access to electricity. And the one thing that I learned is that people, most of these people in rural island communities and rural remote areas use kerosene lamps as their main source of lighting. So aside from the high sustaining cost of kerosene lamps, what we learned is that people had to travel like this one. They had to travel down the mountain and walk several hours just to buy kerosene for their lamps. And uh, the, the Kalinga story is one of the many stories of people who are still living in the dark. So according to World Bank, one out of six people still live without access to electricity. That's 13% of the world's population, about 1.4 billion people. And what's ironic about that is despite the progress that we have, the advancement in technology, the question that keeps on bugging me is why do we still have people like this using fire as the main source of lighting? And that's how we came to be. So I, I, we joined a competition. Uh, this foundation uh, actually hosts annual competition and they get 10 ideas and when they like your idea, they get to fund you and help you build a startup. And that's how uh, we were able to uh, do salt. So uh, one of the things that I wanted to share is we, just, we don't just focus on technology. We also did a behavioral study and we found out that the reason why kerosene is very pervasive is because this system, this lighting system had been passed down from generation to generation. The reason why the pouring of liquid 
is deeply wired in the user's brain, and it's hard to get it out in their system. And that is also the main reason why we didn't remove that from our system. But instead of pouring kerosene, you're pouring in salt water. Instead of lighting up a match, you're pushing an on and off button. And uh, this is our, actually our first prototype, it's salt. So uh, what it does is, uh, there's actually a, a confusion about the innovation that we did. It's not the lamp, but the innovation mainly is the material inside the lamp. The lamp is just an application. And um, talking about social innovation, social innovation is very powerful, especially in a developing country like ours. And um, giving you a brief description of what social enterprise is. So, so social enterprise is really an organization that applies commercial strategies to maximize improvements in human and environmental well-being. So social enterprise is really very important, especially in developing country like ours, because it caters to a real real world problem to a pain point. And when we when we say social enterprise, what you're trying to really measure what, uh, uh, the success of a social enterprise is based on social impact. How many lives have you affected? Of course, it, it has to be sustainable, but social enterprises should focus more on giving service. Uh, the social enterprises are really revolved around the three things, and in the middle of it all is service. So people, planet, profit, but what we really do is we give service. So service above all is the most important thing rather than business. So we're giving, this is more of a service than a, a business actually. So uh, we have several islands that uh, we already helped. So like almost three months ago, we visited an island in far north, uh, that's Kalayan, one of the Babuyan group of islands. Go going there is very grueling, I can say, because uh, it takes about 13 hours by land and another six hours by boat. And when I say boat, it's a wooden fishing boat. Capacity of 20 people, but we're trying to squeeze ourselves up, up to 40 people. So that's how uh, grueling the, the, the travel is. But getting to the island, we learned that the island actually has two sides. Half of the island is progressive, the other half, uh, they don't have access to electricity, and um, they're uh, having a hard time there. So, um, Children even have to wake up 3 in the morning just to catch up a 7 a.m. class, imagine that. And then they have to leave by 4 in the afternoon, but, the, but the, by the time they get to their home, it's already 9 in the evening. They don't have access to electricity, so they don't have any chance to do their homework anymore. Meeting with people like this are one of the reasons why we're doing what we're doing. The hard work that we did for over the past four years is mainly the reason why we got to be part of this. Uh, session here. So I guess it's only, uh, I can say it's 10% luck, but 90% of it was hard work. We were existing for about six years, pursuing uh, the, the developing the technology and trying to get help from people. And uh, it was a, a long journey. But if you are, uh, if you have experienced the problem, you will have the motivation to really do something and give solution to that problem if you personally have experienced it. And uh, experiencing it is, uh, experiencing the problem itself, the very problem, the real world problem that you're trying to solve, I guess will, will uh, keep you motivated and keep you pushing forward. And the reason why I'm, I'm, I'm telling you this is, this one slide here is actually very powerful. But I guess uh, this one slide here, I, th I tell that it, uh, that it is powerful because what do you think the Philippines in the slide stand for? What do you think it is? GDP. You see the difference? The companies below, those are just four of the most successful companies in the US, which happens to be a startup before. So uh, the Philippines is starting, especially the Philippine government, starting to realize now the importance of SMEs and startups. That's why 
some of the public uh, public sector and some of the private companies are starting to uh, build organizations and foundations to support your ideas. And these are some of the foundations that you can tap. Fieldev is uh, very close to me because it helped me a lot, especially because one of the founders of Fieldev or the founder of Fieldev is actually one of my idols. I'm not sure if you're familiar with the founder, Engineer Dado Banatao. He invented the chipset. He's the founder of Mostron. So without inventing the chipset, we, we wouldn't be having a portable PCs, portable laptops, smartphones today. So all of the devices that you have now, 30% of that can be traced to his DNA. So he's really very inspiring. We should be learning a lot about Filipinos going abroad and making a difference outside uh, the whole world. No? So Dato Banatao is the, uh, the Filipino inventors, and uh, I consider him as the father of Semicon. So he's a rock star of the Japanese people, actually. So anyway, um, uh, since the Philippines starting to realize the importance of this, uh, the government are having initiatives of combining all of these uh, sectors to help you out. So all you need to do is just tap them. DOST has so many activities and so many programs that you can, uh, you can join in, like TAPI, if you wanted to commercialize your idea or commercialize your product. And it should be revol revolving actually around these things here. So working together to bring technology to the world. And um, I guess since uh, we are in the Philippines and we have all of these resources around us, we are, you are actually quite lucky to be living in the Philippines. We are an agricultural country. We have diverse marine life. We even have so many minerals in the country, which, are, uh, which uh, many of the companies in the world are actually benefiting from. And um, innovation is very important. So you have to have the initiative to learn things and be curious all the time. Because that, be, uh, that would give you that kind of growth and the kind of, um, of course, the kind of uh, inspiration and motivation for you to create something that will uh, hopefully have a positive impact, social impact. So innovation is very important, but above all, social innovation is important because it caters to basic human need. It caters to a pain point and it caters to a real world problem. So with that, uh, thank you for listening and may you have a wonderful morning.